Buckeye got some grails. Well, these people didn't get f***ed at Buckeye, that's for sure. Why are you wearing sunglasses? Because. Why? You're really hot like the sun, and I didn't want you to blind me. That's not true. I just wanted to be as cool as you. Okay. I just wanted to see what it felt like. You don't want to show that you look like the Toxic Avenger under there? Can you f*** yourself? Heather has the worst eye I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, it's really f***ed up, and if you saw it, you'd probably throw up. I'm not laughing because you have a eye. I'm laughing because you got to wear a big pair of sunglasses on the video. If I didn't, <laughs> we would face, like, so many memes and so much we get like a glimpse? No. No glimpse. I am not going to show that on show it off. People okay. are f***ing rude. The last time I had a size, someone called me Histither. That's funny, though. No, it was f funny. <laughs> it was funny, so let's take a look. <laughs> no. Maybe later on I can poke at it with a pen? You can poke at it with that That's probably what got me in this <laughs> I was going to say, that's how we got here in the first place. Enough about my eyeball. Okay, let's talk about Buckeye okay. D2. Yeah, so remember how we said get f in Buckeye? No, get f Heather has a sigh. That's right, exactly. <laughs> it came back and bit you right in the face, didn't it? Oh, God. Fuck, I was wildin' today. I didn't, I never said that word before, so it sounded really weird. I didn't even know if I wanted to say it. So I saw photos earlier, and I wasn't entirely sure what kind of mystery boxes were there, but it turns out they were Fun Day's mystery boxes from last year. Yeah, so you can tell by the design on the outside that they were the in-person boxes, and they also had a huge stack of Demogorgons next to it. Yeah, and I wonder if those were like the multicolored Demogorgons. They probably are. There were actually like Transformer Freddy boxes. Boxes. Thank you so much Pop Hunt Thrills for capturing all of the footage for this event. I have really enjoyed going through your stories and looking at everything. It's super exciting and congratulations on this really cool shit you got. Yeah, the mystery boxes had Optimus Prime Freddy, the metallic version. And in the little video where people were unboxing these things, they're looking it up on PPG and finding out that it's like 800 bucks. Are they 800? I don't think they're 800. It's a, yes, it's actually $800. For real? Yes. So this Optimus Prime Freddy metallic is $850. Good for them. And the black light is eight ninety, and the regular one is actually three ten. It went down ten bucks, but I thought it was like two fifty a while ago. How much is the uh, classic Loki? So the regular Loki is two hundred and ten, and then there was a metallic one, and that one goes for five hundred and ninety. Those were some really good pulls. Really good pulls. And then there was also Demogorgons. The red one was inside the boxes. The Hall H Red Demogorgon is 230. Wow, so these people really cleaned up. Yeah, and they got four boxes. Wow. I think it was only four boxes based on the video. They went over to Buckeye. They ended up buying them fair and square. They had a ton of bags. So they picked up a lot of other things while they were actually at the event. Yeah. But this goes to show you that you have no idea what's going to be at Buckeye each day. There were actually reports and videos of people bringing in pallets. It wasn't like what you and I had assumed prior to this event happening because remember we thought all the good stuff would be there day one they would just put all the stock out and then by day four it's just picking at the scraps yeah all right so you're probably wanting to know if we're gonna flip out freak out and yell because these guys pulled these boxes and the answer to that is no people that are willing to stand outside as long as they have been absolutely deserves these boxes yeah i agree with that my frustration comes with funko yes that my problem is that they have these funko pops these very limited funko pops just stored away somewhere and i don't understand why funko doesn't take these funko pops and do mystery boxes so you put like one in the midst of like five other funko pops and do like a six pack and then you might be lucky enough to get something really awesome like this freddy funko but funko has all this stuff they're doing a fire sale. They just want to get rid of it. They're finding boxes, just miscellaneous, just probably lying around the warehouse, and they're just putting it out. They're like, ah, f it. Let's just sell this. Sh I don't know. It's not as much about the mystery boxes for me because I feel like they probably just expect, oh, well, you know, we might invite a couple of vendors or close friends to fun days or whatever. Or maybe some people couldn't make it to fun days last year. And they have these leftover boxes, this handful of leftover boxes. I mean, I don't think it's in the thousands. I think it might be like 
30 or 40 tops, right? Yeah, I don't think it's that many boxes. Yeah, so, but we don't know because no, the rest don't. of the weekend might actually have more boxes in store. Could. We could have this year's box for all we know. Possibly. We could have, I don't know, last year's Fright Night, but I think there was an at-home edition Fright Night at this place today. I don't remember. I, I couldn't tell if it was at home or in person because to me, both of the boxes were very similar. Nobody was really talking about those because yeah. the Fright Night boxes, both at home and at the show, were for no. us great. We love them, yeah. but overall they weren't really well received. Let me talk about my issue though that isn't with the mystery boxes because realistically like they're going to plan to have a bit more so that way if there are more people at the show for whatever reason than they anticipate or maybe they anticipated some damage over ordered and none were damaged. They're preparing so they didn't for have the event. To, yeah they didn't have to replace any of the boxes because they all came in good condition sure. right? So they have some extra that they're getting rid of at the warehouse sale. Now my issue comes when there's people who have had their packages lost, who have had their packages damaged, 100%. etc. Yes. Funko says, sorry, we have no more stock. Right. But then it appears at the warehouse sale and people are getting these items for retail or below. So we had a bunch of comments on yesterday's video where we talked about the day one of Buckeye and yes. people were basically responding with comments like, hey, I ordered this Funko Pop and bag, the Funko Pop got destroyed and they wouldn't replace it. Yeah, well, not only that, the Funko Pop and bag with Zero and R2-D2 and the Sorceress, some people don't want the bag. Some people just want the pops. There's a lot of dudes that love Masters of the Universe and they don't want to carry around this like mini feminine backpack, right? They miniature just... backpack, it's very miniature. It is, and for most dudes, you know, it might look this big on their back, right? Exactly. I wouldn't look right with one on. They don't want to spend $105 to $120 on these bundles, but now at the warehouse sale, people are spending like $15 or less on just the pop only. They're not having to purchase the bag with it. There's a lot of frustration from the fans when they're being told like, hey, we don't have any more, and it turns out they do. Yeah, that, that is frustrating. However, with that aside, if they were just selling the Funko Pops by themselves at the warehouse and then like the bags somewhere else, totally understand that because they're just trying to get rid of everything. They're yeah. not going to try to pair everything together. It's frustrating that it's not accessible to everybody. Hollywood Funko exclusives are exclusive to Hollywood. I get it. Funko HQ exclusives are exclusive to HQ. I get it. Arizona Buckeye stuff. Buckeye, Arizona. You have to travel to these places to get these exclusives for the most part, unless you know somebody who's there and who's willing to help you. So I understand where the frustration is, but this definitely isn't the first time that we've seen this with any collectible ever. I mean, for example, you go to San Diego Comic-Con, Dumpster Fire had San Diego Comic-Con exclusives, right? Sometimes they have show only. That's it. Yeah, right. Same with Funko. Show only. It's exclusivity. So, and yeah. it, it depends on where you live in proximity of wherever they're selling. I don't have a problem with that at all. I know Me a lot either. of other people are like, oh, I can't believe this. They're, these guys go to the Buckeye Warehouse and they're getting all these grails. However, yesterday, we're all sitting back and laughing that they stood in line for nothing. Like, well, there was so much garbage yesterday. Hold on. To be fair, though, some of those pops, someone pointed out to me that Stitch is going for like 150 bucks or so that, that eat kid that's like 135 or 140 shared sticker right and but it's not worth it to me to stand in line for no, like eight and a half hours in order no to get it. me neither i agree with you but there's a lot of people you know who cleaned up they they did well and that's fine. good for them as i know I, that's fine i'm just saying it isn't like you're walking in there and it's a wall of optimus prime freddy funko you know transformer pops yeah it's just some leftovers it's just leftover stuff but today, that's the holy grail. I mean, you're talking about opening up a box that's revealing an $850 pop, and you're getting yeah. five boxes of that. And that's I'm insane. imagining there was so many more there today, and there could be, and there could be some more over the next couple of days. I'm interested to see if they have this year's box and Wolverine starts showing up. I don't think we'll see that this soon. And if we see it, it'll be sometime next year. Now, I don't know about Wolverine, but I think that those pops that were turned in are definitely oh going my God. to show up yes. at the sale. Oh yeah, all those Funko Pops that they collected from all the people that went to Fun Days trying to exchange for another item, which that 
that crashed and burned. People turned in their Megatrons, people turned in their Captain Americas, and I think there was a Merlin in there, but a handful of Funko Pops that you could return and get something back from Funko, which was, I, I guess, the equivalent of a mystery box. But all the Funko Pops that those people returned who went to Fun Days, where the hell are those going? And we suggested that maybe they were either going to destroy them, or they were going to re-sticker them, or they're gonna be a Buckeye next year, with that original sticker on it because they're just trying to get rid of shit. Yeah, so if you turned in your things this year and you, you know, were hoping for a prototype or something and we know that that didn't happen, I suggest looking out for those warehouse sales next year. You can get your items back. What a mess that was. Our lovely, beautiful friend Kate pointed out that the Diamond Sorceress had an NYCC sticker with an actual piece count. When they sold it, it was LACC with the backpack combo and it did not have the piece count on the sticker. What? Yeah. You mean to tell me that those Fungo Pops have NYCC but the they sorceress. were really sold at LACC? Yes. And remember, we were wondering about the piece count because the actual sticker did not have a piece count. So what was the piece count? 3,000, I think. Yeah, 3,000. And it's a New York Comic Con sticker. Wow, that is really weird. I did not notice that. Thank you, Kate. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out, Kate. She's very observant. So you want to know the craziest thing about those boxes today, the Blacklight Battle Boxes? What? They were $50 a piece. $50? Yep, you know what that equates to? Four pops, $50 divided by four. Do you know what that equals? Oh boy, um, $12.50? That was really hot. Can you do math again? Is it really? Yeah. Wow, I just randomly guessed that. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, if they were 15 bucks a piece, it would be $60. I am pretty smart. You're really smart and you're pretty fart. So $50, imagine those people who got on an airplane, I know. went to San Diego, I know. went to Fun Days, paid all that money yep. and they walk into this place a year later and buy a box for 50 bucks. That is unbelievable. I would say if anything frustrates me, it would be that. Well, to be fair though, most people don't attend Fun Days without also going to SCCC. It's true. And they don't just go to Fun Days for the boxes. Typic. There are some people who probably do, I'm sure there are, but there's a lot of people who go and they enjoy hanging out with their friends, they enjoy what they get, of course, they enjoy the entertainment and the fun right. and the food Right, there's a lot the more previews. that goes into it, I get it, it's all about yeah, the show, it's but, a song and dance. But, imagine just being able to pick up a box filled with over a thousand dollars worth of sh that's crazy, but congratulations to those who are able to get them. The pieces are amazing, and I just want to shout out to our friend Mike, who sent me both the Metallic Optimus Prime Freddy Funko and the Black Light Optimus Prime Freddy Funko. He sent them to me earlier this year, and I could not be more excited. I mean, the coolest pieces in my collection. I know, he's so amazing. We could have just gone to the warehouse <laughs> and got them for and you. And waited in line for eight and a half hours. Yeah, that's the worst part of it. Even if it were local to us, I really honestly don't think I would do it. I may go there one day. No, we would. I Maybe like one day I would try No, it. you're a content guy. Mm. Everything we do, you're like, we gotta do it because of content. And I'm like, mm. Maybe, I don't know. Actually, we don't. So. No, it's easier just collecting the content from people who went. It's a much cheaper way. I'd have it to fly really to Arizona. I'd really have to stand is. in line and waste my time. I mean, well, I guess you don't call it time wasted when you're pulling thousand dollar boxes, but yeah. yeah, that's unbelievable. I know. So there's my metallic Freddy Funko as Optimus Prime Funko Pop signed by Peter Cullen. I got it signed earlier this year and I, it's so amazing, right? But I'm not yeah. showing you this Funko Pop just to show off. I wanted to show you the Pop Shield armor, which if you ended up picking this guy up today over at Buckeye, you need to buy one of these bad boys in order to protect it. No, you need to buy multiples because you got four really high-end, well, three really high-end pops in a box. I think the other one was like a Freddy Funko Squid Games. Mm, yeah, nobody wants that. You definitely need to protect them all. These are like my 
favorite, absolute favorite hard protectors for Funko Pops. They are just so durable. I love the magnetic top and I love that they come out so easily. Yeah. I know that I've had some Funko branded hard stacks. Not only do they fall apart and crack easily, like I can crack a Funko hard stack with my bare hands and I got little string bean arms. I have so many where it's like, I sort of have to push into the protector and I just, I worry about my pops. Well, there were some protectors that people were getting, I think with a Funko Pop, the pop protector that came with the pop yourselves, people were ordering it. There was like a piece of plastic. So when you would shove your Funko Pop in it, that piece of plastic was like a spike and it was oh, ripping yeah. the boxes up. On the bottom. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't recommend the Funko Pop stacks at all. I think they're absolute garbage. This is what you want. The price point is good and the protection is awesome. So check out 7 bucksapop.com and buy yourself some of these today. You can buy multiples at the same time. They come in sort of like cases. By the way, there was so much content that dropped today about the Matrix Funko Pops coming in damaged from drop. Oh, I didn't even see that. I collected so many photos about this damage, my head was spinning. We're gonna make a video very soon where we discuss all about that again. We also plead with Funko and Drop about giving us pop protection for these Funko Pops. And as I've mentioned before, Drop and Funko need to team up with 7 pop.com. They really do. I, I mean, would pay an extra few bucks in order to put a Pop Shield armor around my NFT Funko Pops. Yeah. I really would. It's crazy that they haven't at least done Funko branded protectors, but it's even more crazy that they haven't seen the potential partnership with Seven Bucks a Pop. Yet. Mm, maybe they will. We don't know. We know nothing about that. And hopefully it happens sometime in the future. That'd be nice. They'd be real smart. You know what? If they don't do it, they're stupid. This is how I'm bullying people now. Like if there's something that just makes sense, I just say, you know what? If that doesn't happen, then whoever's running the show is stupid because that gives the person who's running it the opportunity to say, you know what? I'm not going to be called stupid. I'm going to do it. If they don't partner up with seven bucks a pop, then they're stupid. Let's end on a light note. Check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash gasocast. And the reason why you're going to want to check it out like right now is because tomorrow, Saturday, September the 16th at 9 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be going live via Zoom with our level two, three, and four patrons. And we're going to show off all of our New York Comic Con exclusives right here at this very table. And you're not going to want to miss out on them. They are amazing. These are going to be super graily to a lot of you collectors out there. Additionally, we'll be doing our regular giveaways as we always do. I have a whole pile of great things to give to you, patrons. Just to say thank you for your amazing, incredible support that we appreciate so much. For those who are not aware, we go live on Zoom once a month, every month, with our level two, three, and four patrons, and we have a blast. A lot of our patrons give me feedback on a regular basis saying how much fun it is. And they ask us questions, or maybe we go around the room and we show off some favorite Funko Pops. It's just a really fun, chill session. So check out patreon.com slash gastrocast if you want to be a part of the fun. So what do you think about Buckeye Day 2? Did you think that those mystery boxes are something else? Are you excited to see what comes over the next couple of days? I know that we are. And did you go to Buckeye? Because if so, I want to know everything you got. Let us know all of that and more in the comment section down below. Patrons, we love you and appreciate you. In every video, we like to shout out to 10 of you. In this video, we'd like to shout out to Kathy Roberts, Brad Landis, John DeLuca, Joe B, Roland Roach, Bulldoggy Dog, Dylan Kunath, Dr. Applesauce, Ernest Allen, and Brandy and Keith Via. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. We appreciate all of our patrons. You guys rock. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. Show us some Gasselcast love.